Hey everybody, this video is going to be about my HKP2000 that I just picked up. I did a trade. Um, if you guys watch the firearm guy, um, he has a pretty big YouTube following. Uh, him and I did another trade. And uh, this time I ended up with his P2000 that he's done videos on. But I'm going to show you because uh, I've done some things to it since I got it. So um, let's go over the gun real quick. You guys might uh, know a little bit about the P2000. It is a, a compact version of, uh, it's the predecessor to the P30, I guess you could say. Um, interchangeable back straps has four different sizes. I happen to have the large version on now. The large and the extra large are rubberized, so they have like a hogue type feel to them. Um, this is a V3, so it has a decocker button here. So if you are in single action, uh, you can hit that decocker and it goes there. Uh, let me show you the guys that we are empty in fact. So um, let's hit that again. So uh, the difference between like the USP and the P2000, the USP has that proprietary rail system on it. So this P2000 has a regular, um, it's not quite a 1913 rail, but uh, more of the Glock type rail, the rail that um, most accessories will fit on. So um, let's see. Let's go over some of the things that I've done to that. this. Uh, this already has Trijicon uh, night sights on it. And, you know, night sights are what they are. I, I do plan on using this as a in my carry rotation, so I am glad that it does have night sights on it. So um, you guys can see. Uh, the only thing I don't like about night sights is all three are green. So I would prefer that the front is a contrasting color than the rear. Um, especially because there's not like a size differential on them when you're looking at them. So, um, they look like three dots. You could have them, you know, off kilter and, you know, you could be shooting way the heck left or way the heck right and you wouldn't know it. So anyways, that's my little rant on that. Um, so what I've done to this since I picked this up, um, re doing a little bit of reading and everybody recommends the, uh, HK45C, uh, mag release is much bigger and it fits a direct drop-in swap. So I ordered one of those. And then um, the gun comes with these base plates like this. These are rubberized, so they are flexible. See if you guys can see that flexing. Um, but they give you a, a pinky rest, which you don't really need on this. And it um, it's nice, but you know not necessary. So it makes it harder to conceal. So uh, also from, um, I actually ordered my HK parts from Brownells because I get a CNR discount there and the prices on them are way cheaper than HKparts.net and well, whoever else was selling HK parts that I saw. So I went ahead and ordered them even when you factored in their ridiculous $7.99 shipping for an envelope that weighed less than two ounces. Um, you know, here it is. So Base plate, this is the regular, the flush base plate. As you can see, it doesn't come down and give you that little kick there, so it is better for concealment. And you still get a full grip on there, a three finger grip. I don't feel like my pinky's falling off the bottom. It's, you know, probably three quarters of my pinky rests on there fine. So that's, that's good, good enough. And it will help for concealment because I, I tried concealing this and I did conceal it last night under a hooded sweatshirt, but that little thing was making it a little bit obvious. So wasn't that crazy about it. And this didn't, these parts didn't come in until, um, uh, this, this afternoon, this afternoon's mail. So, um, here they are. Uh, the other thing I got was a, the 12 pound, uh, HK hammer spring. I wasn't sure what hammer spring was in this. It had a nice trigger when I got it, but I didn't know it was painted red. And the research I said, I uh, have, have looked up on uh, HK Pro forum was the paint really didn't matter, but um, more often than not, the stock uh, hammer springs on these were painted red. And I believe they were 14 pounds. So I ordered the 12 pound blue painted spring, which was three to four coils longer than the red spring, but it was definitely a lighter um, resistance to compress. And it looked like the diameter of the wire was a little bit thinner. Um, not a big difference 
when when you do trigger pull on it with the two different springs and the way you go about changing those is you just you have to knock out that roll pin there and then the the back strap actually has the um catch for the when you compress the hammer spring then you can knock that pin back through this one uh you just push that roll pin out and then um there's a spring a coil spring that looks like a ballpoint pen spring that is captured and goes into a hole on the release um if you dump the mag uh there's it juts into the mag well and then it catches right here on the front of the mag that was really easy to install all you have to do is compress that spring push this in and then line up make sure you can see daylight through the hole and push the roll pin back through there so that was a piece of cake um i really like this pistol um i don't have a glock 19 anymore and i was planning on using my fns9 for concealed carry for fall and winter but now that i have this uh this is a shorter grip and a shorter barrel and it is easier to conceal than the fns9 but it is a little bit heavier than the fns9 so i'll probably flip flop back and forth between the two so um, before I go on too much further, um, I'll show you guys. I'm going to put roll in some footage from uh, at the range today of me shooting and doing a mag change. It wasn't anything spectacular, but just goofing around. So um, my wife was with me there today, so I actually had a photographer. So uh, I had to roll or take some footage. So the holster that I used today, you guys might on my channel, I've done a review on this holster. This is the Safari Land 578 GLS. It's a universal holster. It fits all kinds of guns. And I use this for my FNS9L. I used it for my Glock 19 when I had it. Um, several other guns. And it's set up for a, a gun with a wide um, trigger guard. So let's show you that it does in fact work on the HK pistols as well. And there's no interference with the ambi levers on there. It still works fine. You just take your firing grip depress that switch and then it draws very nicely it doesn't leave any marks on the gun or anything like that this is safari land 7 material which is uh, a type of polymer that nylon something or other and um, great holster love it very comfortable works great puts the gun at a little bit of a cant which is perfect and really enjoy that holster i, I can't recommend it enough i mean for 35 to 40 five dollars you can find them and they come in either coyote tan or a black i believe that's all uh, those are the only two colors i've ever seen so anyway great holsters this is the long version because i have the fns 9l as well as the regular fns 9 slide so um, this gives me the coverage on my longest gun and then most definitely you can see that that is overkill for this but it works and i didn't have to buy another outside the waistband holster for this so i don't have the holsters that i use for inside the waistband uh, for this pistol nearby right now otherwise i'd show you those two but they are a tagua or tagua however you pronounce it um, they're leather uh, black with a belt clip so um, thanks for watching and uh, i'll talk to you guys next time shoot safe